Hi, in this video, let's discuss the next set of questions starting from estrogen regulation. Follicle stimulating hormone regulates the secretion of estrogen and this FSH is produced from anterior pituitary. So if you look into literature, estrogen secretion is regulated by FSH released from anterior pituitary. Release of FSH is stimulated by gonadotropin releasing hormone which is secreted by hypothalamus. Now moving on to the next topic, forces generated in rapid maxillary expansion. So uh, various articles are quoting different values. It is reported that during rapid maxillary expansion, forces between 3 and 10 pounds are produced by single activation of jack screw appliances, while multiple daily activations could result in cumulative loads of 20 pounds or even more. Right? Now moving on to the next topic, previously we discussed diabetes mellitus complications, so I'll present you a table which is given in Davidson, which is much more clear, uh, various microvascular and macrovascular complications as you can see now. Along with that, which are the following infections? Uh, fungal infections is more commonly associated with diabetes mellitus, is it candidiasis or any other? If you look into literature, candidiasis is one which is commonly seen in diabetic uh, patients. On mycosis, oral candidiasis, vulvovaginal candidiasis are observed frequently in diabetic patients. And in one of the articles, it's mentioned that diabetes mellitus is a major risk factor for fungal infections. And common fungal infections in diabetic patients include candidiasis, mucormycosis, and aspergillosis. Right? Moving on to the next topic. Side effects of radiation include all except. So I got options mucositis, dysphagia, and pharyngeal herniation. So as you know, radiation induced mucositis is widely prevalent. Dysphagia is also associated with radiation therapy. But there is no such word on pharyngeal hernia herniation as a side effect for radiation therapy, right? Moving on to the next topic, a modified Widman flap, third incision, I think I got uh, those keywords. So what is this modified Widman flap? So if you look into literature in 1965 in Currency, it's clearly mentioned that Morris revived a technique described early in the century in periodontal literature which he called as unrepositioned mucoperiosteal flap. Essentially the same procedure was presented in 1974 by Ramford and Nizel who called it as modified Widman flap. So if you look into the steps in, uh, in modified Widman flap, step one, the initial incision is an internal bevel incision to alveolar crest starting 0.5 to 1 mm away from the gingival margin. Scalloping follows the gingival margin. In step two, gingiva is reflected with periosteal elevator. Step three, a crevicular incision is made from the bottom of the pocket to the bone, circumscribing the triangular wedge of tissue containing the pocket lining. Step four, after the flap is reflected, a third incision is made in the interdental spaces coronal to the bone with accurate or an interproximal life and the gingival collar is removed. I guess there was a question on the third incision in modified women flap. So this fits into the relevant answer for this question, right? Now moving on to the next topic, HIV. What are seen or what are not seen in HIV? So as you know, HIV is a combination of different wide range of opportunistic infection. So if you look into this table, AIDS is defined as development of specified opportunistic infections, tumors and other clinical features. This accompanied by a fall in CD4 count to less than 200 cells per millimeter cube and a change in the spectrum of associated infections which include the following, esophageal candidiasis, chronic cryptosporidial diarrhea, pulmonary tuberculosis, Kaposi's sarcoma, HIV associated with cryptococcal meningitis, cerebral toxoplasmosis, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, HIV associated dementia and even oral hairy leukoplakia, corrugated white plaques running vertically on side of the tongue virtually pathognomonic of HIV. It's usually asymptomatic and is due to Epstein-Barr virus as we're all aware with. So the question which I came across is in HIV following conditions are present except Kaposi's sarcoma, hairy leukoplakia, ENEG. ENEG is something which is not found nowadays. So ENEG can be seen in immunocompromised situations, but it's been 40 or 50 years uh, since a case of ENEG has been documented in literature, right? So there is no ENEG nowadays because of the use of antibiotics or, or whatever. And ENEG, as you know, it's a it's caused by bacterial infections, mixed bacterial infections, including anaerobes, especially spirochetes, like Tryponema, Fusobacterium, 
pivotal intermedia, etc. Right? So anode would be more appropriate in this particular context. Now, moving on to the next topic, ameloblastoma granules. So what do they represent? So it's clearly mentioned in Schaeffer's that in granular cell ameloblastoma, there is marked transformation of cytoplasm, usually of the stellate reticulum like cell, so that it takes on a very coarse granular eosinophilic appearance. This often extends to include peripheral columnar cuboidal cells as well. Ultrastructural studies such as that of Tandler and Rosie have shown that these cytoplasmic granules represent lysosomal aggregates lysosomal aggregates with no recognizable cellular component right so that's some information pertaining to ameloblastoma granules and another topic gluconeogenesis which are the following enzymes are present in mitochondria so just look at this flowchart gluconeogenesis is basically synthesis of glucose from non-carbohydrate compounds right so it can be lactate pyruvate amino acids glycerol etc so in this flowchart you can clearly see that pyruvate carboxylase and malate dehydrogenase are present in mitochondria whereas the rest of the enzymes uh, phosphenol pyruvate carboxy kinase glycerol 3p uh, dehydrogenase uh, glycerol kinase fructose 1 6 bisphosphatase etc including glucose 6 phosphatase they are found in cytosol whereas pyruvate carboxylase and mdh malate dehydrogenase are present in mitochondria isn't it now moving on to the penultimate topic bowdler henry technique so where is it used impacted lower third molar so if you look into literature so it's cl clearly mentioned that complications that may be associated with surgical removal of impacted tooth include periodontally compromised adjacent teeth damage to adjacent teeth root fracture neuropathy sinus involvement osseous defect etc to overcome these complications bowdler henry and hove have described a technique for removal of lower third molar called lateral trepanation technique right so that's bowdler henry technique so uh, there were uh, there are several case reports pertaining to the same and literature review is present on the same so lateral trephination technique first described by Bowdler Henry modified S shaped incision is made from retromolar force across the external oblique ridge to first molar right and buccal cortical plate is trephined over the third molar crypt but is used to make vertical cuts anteriorly and posteriorly right so the main advantage with this technique lateral trephination technique by Bowdler Henry is bone healing is excellent and there is no loss of alar bone around second molar right now moving on to the final topic of this video which of the following projections is best to visualize a radiographically condylar neck fractures reverse town projection reverse town with open mouth right we have discussed about various uh, radiographic projection techniques in our e classes radiology section you can refer that for more information so in case of a reverse town projection open mouth technique right in order to further improve the visualization of condyles the patient's mouth is open so that the condyle heads are located inferior to articular eminence right so reverse town would be ideal to uh, it depends on the options but a reverse town is something which is exclusively indicated for observing the fractures of condylar neck right so these are some of the topics which i wanted to highlight in this present video i hope it's clear